Hi Capricorn, this is your astrology reading for October, more or less. What I'm going to be doing in the astrology readings is I'm giving you a little piece of information about what's going on throughout the whole month. Giving you like a little oomph of what that is. Now I can't go over into detail with you every single little bit and all of the aspects. I just don't have time for every single bit of that. So I'm going to give you the majority of the main focuses of the points of information. Outside of that, you can always check the weekly healing messages or you can always book your own appointments and come to me and then it will be directly all about you in general anyway. Otherwise, that's just not enough time and I'm all going to be trying to make the videos approximately a half hour long for all astrology as well as all tarot for now on. So this way I'm going to be trying to place that. Now, with that being said, this is for Capricorn, all sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. But if you do... If you are someone who's coming to me and it's under the Venus sign, please understand that for me, when I do the astrology and so forth, uh, Venus is going to be more along the lines of your sensitivity more than like love. Love situations aren't necessarily, you're going to, I'm not your person if you're just watching it for the love situation, because it's not the way that's going to be coming out through me directly. It'd be more along the lines of sensitivity. But with that being said, uh, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus in those areas. Now, like I said, this is for October, and I'm going to be going over some of... <laughs> I'm going to be going some over some of the more important things. For a lot of you Cancer... Not Cancer. A lot of you Capricorns. Spirit is telling me some of you over this month are definitely going through some... Uh, Karmic debts, karmic lessons, but there are things that will also be bringing you financial success or just success in general. <clears throat> so if you're doing your homework, you know, your personal self work right in this area, it's definitely bringing you to a new level of success as you tackle what this month has to offer. It's going to be a very powerful month. But with that being said, let me just run down the list of the important things and then we'll hit each one of the houses. Uh, first off, you have Pluto that is going direct on the 3rd. I've been saying the whole time that Pluto feels... Pluto and Saturn, as they've been sitting in that retrograde, getting ready to come forward, and now you've got both of them that all have been moving forward. Like I said, on the 3rd is when Pluto is going to actually go direct. But it feels like you've been kind of like suspended, like pulled all the way up and kind of left dangling, waiting for the fall to come and the crash or the fall, not crash, but the fall for like to start. I feel like, or, or like maybe you're standing like at a race and you're waiting for them to, you know, shoot the gun that tells you when it's time to start racing, but you're all waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting. And I feel like this is the energy that we've been all going through as we're holding on to that weight of Pluto going direct. Well, it will go direct on the third and that's when things are going to start making a movement. On that same day, Mercury is moving into Scorpio. Here's the key though. On Halloween day, Samhain, October 31st, Mercury is going to go retrograde. So approximately around the 14th, Mercury is going to start actually dipping more into shadow energy prior to that retrograde. So your communication, you might want to start watching that word vomit. <laughs> um, but we'll look into that a little bit more when we figure out where that is for you. On the 4th, you have the 3rd, Pluto going retrograde. Pluto going direct. On the 3rd, you also have Mercury moving into Scorpio. On the 4th, you have Mars moving into Libra. <clears throat> On the 8th, you have Venus moving into Scorpio. On the 13th, you have the full moon in Aries. And I always say that it's technically a three-day some people call it a five-day, but I technically call it a three-day. So the first day is going to be a little bit of Pisces energy with Aries, then Aries, and then a little bit of Aries and Taurus energy as you're working through that full moon. We'll check out where that's going to be in just a few minutes as we get to that. Then you're going to have on the 23rd, the sun is moving into Scorpio. On the 27th, you have a new moon in Scorpio. 
And then you have Halloween, where you're going to have a major energy that's also taking place. The whole month is kind of building in a form to that energy. At least is going to show itself and illuminate itself on that day. And I'll go into that in a minute. Everybody is talking about this, about being Libra season, at least until the 23rd when it actually becomes Scorpio season. But I'm telling you, this month has a whole hell of a lot of Scorpio going on. Which makes it also about the rules of those relationships, no matter where it really is for you. Because that's where it owns that normal house of Scorpio is normally the eighth house, which is the rules of those relationships. So in a form, everything is going to be dealing with those rules of those relationships. But Libra, <coughs> since it technically is Libra season until the 23rd, everybody's saying it's about, you know, justice and new relationships, finding new balance and harmony and beauty and whatnot. And, and that is true, but it's not. At the same time, they're not understanding that most of your astrologers that you listen to aren't going to be speaking about the fact that Haumea and Make Make are both in Libra as well. They're ignoring that. They're not acknowledging it or they're not seeing it in their charts. That means you've got the whole collective consciousness in those relationships and as well as the lotus flower within those relationships. So how are you really viewing things with the lotus flower the collective consciousness, Mercury, about to go shadow, and Venus, and Pallas, because Pallas is also in Scorpio, which is strategic thinking, really being intelligent and wise about the decisions that you're making within these relationships right now. Then you also have Vista, which technically is in retrograde going towards Uranus and Taurus, Ura, which is still in Virgo with Mars, and it is all about sacrifice and commitment. So, I mean, you have major energies shifting and, and being spoken about, but the collective consciousness <coughs> is definitely driving the whole situation home within these rules, these walls, and these boundaries within all of these different forms of relationships and responsibilities. And they're definitely touching base. Now, I do everything off of this phone instead of a computer. So, now I'm going to start going through the houses. And like I said, I'm going to try to throw this all into approximately 30 minutes for you. And I hope that that helps you in some way. Capricorns, you are definitely in your first house. You definitely, you've been feel, feeling it for a while. And you're going to continue to feel it for a while. And you're very self your, your house of self-awareness, your physical body, your identification, your ID, your image, your, your appearance, your view of life, and the very personality of who and what you are. You have Pluto here. You have Pluto here that's about to go direct on the 3rd. Saturn has already gone direct. These two are coming together. You know, and you also have the south node here. So this is saying there's some major shift going on in your very self-awareness. There's some ma major old you is dying, new you is birthing. You're being uh, resurrecting into a new level of your true authentic self. A new level of your higher self is starting to come out and be birthed. If you are not in denial of the situations... Because Pluto is death, decay, and destruction for renewal, rebirth, and regeneration. It's the only planet when it goes direct that actually calms down. It's prior to it going direct. And these energies that Saturn was feeling while it was in retrograde is what that power passion was. It was pushing on what are you not acknowledging that you can change about yourself to help yourself bring yourself into a new image of yourself, a new truth of yourself, and a new awareness. <clears throat> what had you gotten so comfortable and used to that you didn't want to change because you were uncomfortable with the change. You should be coming through this energy right now. But you will still definitely be seeing it over this month and next month. When these two are definitely are coming together. They're already very close together. But they're literally going to come together Saturn and Pluto. Alright. In your second house. 
is Aquarius. You don't have anything special going on here at the moment, which isn't positive or negative. It just means there isn't any additional houses bringing extra emphasis to the situation. So there's nothing special going for you or against you in the ways of your self-worth, your self-value, and your self-esteem because it's already in your self-awareness. If you're aware truly of yourself, your self-wealth, your self-worth, self-value, and self-esteem should already be being put in check or acknowledging what needs to change to help you illuminate yourself. When you feel better about yourself, you bring more manifestation in a positive way to yourself. The second house also speaks to you about your money. When you're feeling more when you feel better about yourself, your self-worth, self-value, self-esteem, you bring that flow of manifestation to you, creating more money for you also is a little bit easier. When you're uncomfortable with who you are, you know, in general, you also aren't bringing that flow in as positively and you're actually pushing it out. So this is about a time of coming into that new self-awareness in ways that help illuminate as well as bring you money. Any, there isn't any planets here, but that's been working for you ever since Saturn moved in. And until Saturn moves into Aquarius, that's going to continue to stay that way. Unless you have other things going on in Aquarius, and then it may take some shifts and changes. But at this time, no. Now, in your universal third house for you, this is your communication zone. This is a little bit more tricky. It depends on where you are on your spiritual journey really on the spiritual energy and understanding that energy because the universal third house is your siblings your neighbors and your short journeys like the trip to 7-eleven you know or the store right around around the corner but it is also your siblings and your neighbors it's up close communication but it is also you know the details and the trivia the text messages <clears throat> that which is communication that you overlook and don't find as important, that you just toss out quickly, this is that kind of house, the communication house, but that you toss out so quickly you don't really necessarily think it through. You just send that information out. This is where you have Neptune right now, as well as Lilith. So Lilith is your uh, sexual temptress. In a form, she is definitely speaking to you about how you feel about yourself and are you communicating that how you're feeling about yourself outwardly. Plus, you have Neptune here, which is also in retrograde right, th right now. Neptune is funny. Neptune is magical, but also delusional or an illusion, depending on how you're seeing it. Take the idea of the video you're watching right now. You're watching this. It seems like I'm sitting here talking with you and I'm telling you this information where by the time you watch this video, I'm off doing whatever it is that I'm doing. Like I said, somewhat of an illusion. It's a magical idea, but it's not exactly right. So Neptune creates magic. It brings the ability of being able to harness and create magic. But are you creating magic from a nostalgic point of view? Like I said, it's where fantasy smacks you in the face with harsh reality. So what is going on with these conversations? How you truly feel about yourself. Your sexuality. And your sexuality is partially how you feel about yourself. I mean, like I said, when you look in the mirror and you smile and you feel good about yourself, then you're bringing in that kind of positivity. But when you're looking in the mirror and you're like, what the fuck happened there? then that's a different kind of energy. It's not the same. This is part of what that inner warrior is, that inner sexuality, because she's speaking to how you're feeling about that energy with that magic. And where is that communicating to that up close and personal communication? Those text messages, that trivia, that um, short journeys, your siblings, your neighbors. How is that communication actually being spoken and remember this also makes it speak to communication in general which is mercury which will be going shadow on approximately the 14th so you want to make sure that what you are spitting out you do mean it and you are acknowledging how you're spitting it out as well because most likely you're meaning what you say but do you mean it the way that you're saying it 
Is it being interpreted properly? Because you may find that that might be a situation that you have to acknowledge this month with Neptune being in retrograde and Mercury about to go retrograde. Just saying, it's a communication house. Then you have the universal fourth house for you, which happens to be... This is <coughs> Aries for you. And Aries happens to have Chiron in it. You're coming into a new level of your karmic lessons. A new level of reincarnation of self. The fourth house speaks to us of who we are and what we can never lose. It's the home of who and what we are. So this speaks to us of getting right with our inner emotional security. Tapping into those things that we haven't been able to quite touch, you know, quite put our finger on that makes us secure or insecure. And you're looking at these and new ways of finding a deeper depth and truth of true self. And what is that bringing to the karmic lesson of who and what you are that helps you find that inner emotional security with Chiron being here it is definitely speaking of those wounds that have not been able to be uh, healed it's like the skeletons in the closet in a form it's the pieces that's kept you from truly being able to embrace inner emotional security. While Chiron is here, it's giving you a brand new cycle, a brand new beginning, a brand new chance of being able to figure out that depth of self and help you start to create that into a brand new beginning. But it's by learning where you've been able to not truly touch base on that inner emotional secur security and what's kept you from doing so. Now, when you get into that universal fifth house, we're going into Taurus. Taurus is very stubborn, but very much wants to enjoy the beauty in life. It wants its way. It's patient. And what I mean by patient is, is it will take its time to do what has to be done. It's stubborn and inflexible, but it will do, it will take the long road to get what it wants done. Okay, because it wants that beauty, it wants that joy, it wants the good life. All right, this is your area of your pursuit of pleasure. This is where love is created. Your personal investments are, you know, for your own enjoyment. This is also where your creative expression is brought out and how you enjoy life. Well, you have independence here. You have Uranus here. Independence, individuality, uniqueness, freedom, self-worth, self-value, self-esteem, because it's also inside of Taurus. But for you, that's the creativity. It's the inner child speaking to the adult about what brings them joy. All right. You also have a uh, Vista here, which is in retrograde as well. So the soul fire is only communicating with you about what you desire to make happy in your life and how you stand on your own two feet with independence, individuality, creativity. And bring that up to the surface so that you can enjoy life the way you really want to. And bring in a pursuit of pleasure that makes you enjoy life as well as helping you touch base on a true depth level of what brings you that inner emotional security. When you're happy, you're getting closer to what, you, what really truly brings you that security. So we're looking at things from this point of view. What really brings in that joy? Are you acknowledging it? Because like I said, the soul fire is in retrograde and it's only speaking to you about what you're not acknowledging to yourself about what you need to be independent, unique, stand up in your power and bring that up and out of you because only you can now in that universal sixth house which happens to be your daily mundane tasks this is gemini there is nothing here so nothing is going for you or against you throughout this month which is a positive thing 
or a negative. It can go either way. It really depends on where you take it. The only thing that is there is the Polaris Star, which is one of the guardians of the pole when it never leaves. It's the North Star. So in a form, it is bringing illumination and abundance and sensitivity because that's always there. Curiosity of extra sensitivity of those emotions versus logic. And it's speaking to you of those daily tasks, your daily tasks, your uh, everyday mundane tasks and your habits and acknowledging what works for you and what doesn't. Then when you get into the seventh house, this is where cancer is. Um, cancer is your nesting energy in one form, but it's also about learning how to get this right so you move forward in positive ways because the North Node is here. So is Sirius. Technically, both of them Sirius never moves out of Cancer. It's just the way that it shows up. But it's definitely showing you what you need to know in order to move forward. So paying very good attention to the positive relationships that you have in your life and how they are working for you or against you and acknowledging which ones need to be there and which ones don't. The eighth house is speaking to you about the relationships, responsibilities. And this is one, two. Leo, again, there's nothing here. So you have your same rules, your walls, your boundaries that support your your joint finances, your joint efforts, and your joint resources. As long as you're acknowledging what is regenerating your life in positive ways within these relationships, everything is fine because that's the exact words that Spirit just highlighted for me. That is exactly making sure you are regenerating the relationships to have proper, healthy rules within them. Plain and simple. That ninth house for you is Virgo. <laughs> and this is where Yura is. The ninth house is your higher self asking you about your sacrifice and commitment to your ethics, your morals, your spiritual urges, your higher self, your inner truth. Coming into a new level of that philosophy of self and higher self and what that means to you. As well as, you know, religion and where all of this is taking you. Where this whole life is taking you. You're coming into a new idea, a new level of what that sacrifice and commitment actually means. And you're coming into acknowledging that. Now, in that 10th house, you are speaking to this is where all the energies start to really come into play for you. The 10th house at this time is the community. No, it's, it's your reputation. It is your reputation, your prestige, your professional career, your professional life. It is the outer world, the duty of that outer world the authority and the responsibilities of it. Plus it's your financial success, your financial foundation and the career and honor that's being built there. This is Libra for you. This is asking you to get right with balance and find that proper justice that creates it. You have um, the sun and Mars here up until the 23rd when the sun moves out. So it's illuminating it and bringing a new shine to you. But it's also bringing a new passion, a new fire, a new sexuality, a new truth behind that power because it's also your inner warrior. So it's making you stand full in your power and finding truth within yourself of that honor and reputation, being able to allow you to shine and illuminate who you are and where you're going. As long as you're feeling good about yourself and you're trusting in that energy that Mars is producing there for you, then this is definitely a positive thing. It's if you don't believe in yourself and you're feeling lower self-esteem, then this is actually going to go against you because of the flow of energy that you have. You have to flip that over so that it would be working for you. But it's going to be illuminating whether it's working for you or not either way because that's what the sun does. The sun illuminates everything. But it's going to be bringing it into justice. If you're in the more positive of it, it's going to put you in a flow in a much better way over this month and keep you rising. And that's definitely a good thing. The 11th house is Scorpio for you. 
everybody is pointing at Scorpio. I know that this is Libra season, but everything all month long is pointing at Scorpio. And that is your community. That is your larger groups, your friends, your wishes, your, your friends, your wishes, your memberships, your hopes, your dreams, your ambitions, your very liberty, your self-realization within these friends, communities, memberships. And you are going to have Pallas here. You're going to have Mercury here. Again, starting to also go into shadow. And Venus. Plus the sun will be coming in at the second half of the month. Then you are going to have the full moon. I mean the new moon on the 27th. Bringing to you brand new beginnings. But you're going to be acknowledging some of the things that have set you back. Some of the things that have set back some of those relationships. And I'm not saying for the positive or the negative by you or by them. This is asking you, do you definitely have the right people in the right places? Are they supporting those goals, those dreams, those wishes, those ambitions? Are they helping you move forward in healthy ways? Because you have palace here helping you strategically place this all in place as long as you're thinking it through. But the communication may be very harsh, may be very blunt in this area, which could be a little bit hard because you might, it may be like a very stressed, powerful time. And it's so quickly on the go. Like I said, communication is going to be a little negative as you go into that retrograde at the end of the month. You'll be in shadow. Venus will be very sensitive. So it may be very sensitive within these communications, but it's definitely asking you if the right people are really friends, really people that are going to help nourish you and build the sensitivity and strengthen what it is you're trying to create? Do you have people who are strong enough to stand tall and stand by you to help you create that as you move forward? Because they need to be people who are more like you and capable of doing so. Helping to bring the dream into light and make sure that they're people who are able to stand firm with you in balance. That universal 12th house is the end of the situation for you. And this happens to be in Sagittarius. <clears throat> all month long, all well, we've had uh, Jupiter here in Sagittarius for most of the year. For the year, for the most part. And this is your universal 12th house. Bringing abundance to that stuff that you haven't worked through. Your skeletons in the closet. Some of your unconscious energy. Some of those karmic debts. Sometimes karmic debts are also positive coming back towards you. I mean, it's not always a bad thing. It all depends on how upfront and honest you are with yourself. And how much you've been working through... Your skeletons in the closet, as I like to put it. A lot of times our skeletons in the closet have skeletons in the closet. I am being told by spirit right now that some of this will be dealing with courage of overcoming government issues for some of you as you move forward. Because it's been self-sacrifice, self-undoing, self-deception that's made you deal with some of these situations. But it is karmic debts being brought to the surface, unconscious mind being brought to the surface that is going to deal with grief, sorrow, shame, and blame. Like I said, the skeletons in the closet that have the skeletons in the closet. You have Jupiter here speaking to you of the higher abundance of the higher self, acknowledging what the truths are. But you also have Cirrus here. This is the threefold theory coming all the way around. This is also um, where you nurture or you neglect the truths. And the, full, and the moon will be there on Halloween to help illuminate anything that hasn't been illuminated by Salwin on Halloween Day. I love you guys. And if you're more interested in, or if you're interested in a little bit more private, you can always look at the information down below and book your own appointments or also check out the tarot readings. I love you all. Bye.